Okay, here's an interesting little gadget I snagged off of eBay. It's a USB voltage tester. Uh, it basically shows the uh, voltage uh, a phone's being charged at, the current that's going into the phone, uh, the instantaneous power, and the number of cumulative uh, milliamp hours that the uh, phone's consumed, uh, which is handy to figure out whether or not your uh, phone's taking a charge properly. And the reason for that is uh, there's been a lot of changes in the USB standard over the last two years, and uh, lots of people seem to have piles of USB converters, much like I do, and uh, some of them are all over the place in terms of what standard they're written to, and sometimes they charge phones and sometimes they don't, or sometimes they seem to be charging the phone, but uh, not much is happening. So uh, a really neat little gadget uh, which tells you what's going on in terms of uh, whether or not the phone's actually charging. Uh, let's take a close look at its performance and uh, tear it down. Okay, slightly more complicated setup. Let's walk through it. Uh, lab power supply is still powering up the tester. It's just off the frame here. Uh, this is a rheostat and resistor little switch. and Basically, it allows me to adjust the uh, resistance, which, of course, will affect the amount of current flowing through the tester. Uh, I have a voltage to current converter here just slightly in the frame. Uh, and then here's the actual current. So, for example, right now it's uh, a 1.3 amps. Uh, and the tester is declaring there's 1.5 amps going through it. Um, you know, let me just insert a little table. Um, basically, this tester is uh, really bang on accurate until about one and a quarter amps. And then as, once you go a bit beyond that, it seems to uh, get into a, uh, a mode where it starts to declare the current to be actually quite a bit higher than uh, what, uh, what is actually uh, being delivered. So uh, I don't know if that's a fundamental limitation or not, but uh, if we crank it back down, for example, uh, to 1 amp, for example, now it's 1.03 amps. And now, uh, unfortunately, probably a little hard to read, but it says uh, 1.04 amps. So uh, the tester basically seems to be uh, really quite uh, accurate and uh, matching the results until about 1.3 amps. Okay, uh, so this piece of test equipment basically got self-powered off the USB line. Of course, the question is, at what voltage does it uh, no longer function? Uh, I've connected the uh, tester to a lab power supply out of the frame of the picture here. I'm just lowering the voltage. As you can see, uh, we're now about 3.7 volts. And uh, we'll just keep on bringing it down until the uh, the tester no longer functions, um, which is around about 3.3. Okay. And you can see now the, the poor little... Uh, microprocessor that's on the tester is trying to boot. There's not enough voltage, so it uh, kind of stays in a reset function. If I bring up the uh, power, it then comes back. So uh, that's good, actually. That's a good wide range. A USB converter, of course, should never drop much below about 4 and a bit volts. So um, this tester will keep on running uh, in those conditions. Uh, so this is the tester. It's uh, a cordwood construction. There's a, a display on top, and uh, looks like the actual measurement components are in between the sandwich. Uh, which is good because obviously if you're handling this board, you don't want components on this side here where you could accidentally knock them off if they place them on the side. Uh, the only thing on top, of course, are the two connectors and this uh, display, uh, which is worthy of a mention. It's an uh, organic LED, uh, absolutely gorgeous, uh, very sharp and uh, brilliant display. I'm uh, very pleased because this tester was not very much money. So, um, next thing, of course, to do is to desolder these two little headers so we can take a peek at actually uh, the circuit topology below. Okay, so uh, here's the uh, display removed, and this is the bottom. Uh, two active semiconductors, uh, very appropriate choices. This is the Maxim uh, MAX471. It's a uh, high side current sense uh, device, which makes sense. Uh, basically, the current runs from one connector to the other through this device, and it produces a uh, readout for this little microcontroller. It's an ST micro, and that ST micro is connected to an I2C C bus and some power connections which go up into this uh, uh, o organic LED display, OLED, they call them. Uh, and you can see in the back here, there's a um, the data pins and the control pins for the I2C bus, and then some power pins. And they've obviously just soldered this uh, cute little display onto this carrier card so it uh, can fit. So, uh, pretty straightforward topology and all quite appropriate. Okay, I uh, grabbed this off eBay, as I mentioned, uh, it was uh, just a few dollars. Uh, here's the uh, web page of the uh, vendor I snagged it from. 